They always say Japan is such a safe country. It can be as chaotic and crazy as you want it to be. I got to explore some wild bear country, took part in a traditional festival with a huge bonfire, as well as a little bit of human sacrifice, or as they call it, a husband throwing festival. Saw people get ashes smeared on their face for good luck. Yeah, thank you. Got you too. <laughs> a little bit of a snake noodle. And in contrast, Japan can be incredibly relaxing, scenic, and beautiful. Don't let his pretty voice fool you. <laughs> he had quite a laugh at us, as instead of snow showing the first half of this part, we decided to go with just our shoes, <laughs> which in three meters of snow is a mistake. Basically, where are we going? <laughs> How do we go back? We're gonna die. <laughs> we are too fat. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> After spending 40 minutes walking to this point, which probably would have taken us five minutes without snow, he explained that these trees are about 100 years old and they were saved from becoming a cedar tree forest because of their beautiful figures. We finally got our snowshoes put on, which made the journey back a bit easier. And he showed us some wild animals tracks in the snow. This is the rabbits, kind of looks like Mickey Mouse. This is the Tanuki or raccoon dog, and this is where it stays every winter. As legends say in Japan, it's a magical creature that can change its form and has giant magical balls. You can see these statues around Japanese houses or restaurants as a symbol of good luck. There's even a full-length animated movie called Pompoko, which really explains some of the magic they can do. These are the tracks of a Japanese weasel, which he happened to have a dead one in his bag. <laughs> After playing with the dead weasel, he showed us a sour persimmon tree, which feeds a lot of the local animals, such as the tanuki. <laughs> After the exhausting hike, we went back to the main building. It's a museum with animals in it, and it's shaped like a snake. And it's mostly under the snow at this point. Again, like I said, it's about three meters of snow already. In this museum, there's a bunch of traditional history around the area and animals you can check out. They also have a wall of their snow record. And as you can see, 2020 sucked for more reasons than one. But this year, even though it's just January, it has snowed so much. This area relies heavily on tourism for snow. So one of the main things I came to do was to try snowboarding for the first time. But before I went snowboarding, I had my last meal at a place that makes fresh soba noodles, 
which we got to watch the chef make, and they serve a specialty dish of tempura fried mushroom. And the mushrooms are huge, like bigger than your head huge. After that, I had to say goodbye to my life and try snowboarding. I don't like going fast on man-made items whatsoever. Uh, I've already fallen down like three times. <laughs> Not very good at this. My Swedish instructor, Jimmy, was incredibly patient with me as I had a lot of fear to get over. <laughs> I'm never ever gonna let you go. Okay. So I will be here. Do you wanna try to stand up for yourself? You can, I can make sure your board doesn't go anywhere. I can block it with my foot. Okay. There you go, first attempt. It was an interesting experience and I liked giving it a go, but I'll just leave it to the professionals who actually have a passion for doing this because I don't think I can ever do this at the same level that he can. I was really pleased to learn I'd be going to a ryokan I'd been to before. This place is nestled in the valley. It's very remote and a little difficult to get to unless you have a car. This is the Kakaki Ryokan, which I'd went to before for Fuji Rock in 2018. In the summer, it is quite warm with the sounds of cicadas. In contrast, in the winter, it is so quiet and peaceful. It's super relaxing and quiet, unlike back during the times of Fuji Rock, which is now just a fond memory as we can't really go to concerts these days. This Ryokan is actually famous for housing a lot of the artists that come through for Fuji Rock in previous years, such as Bjork or Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I have a funny story about going there. I was so tired from this music festival, I fell asleep in this incredibly comfortable outdoor onsen just floating on my back, and when I woke up, some woman found me. This time I didn't fall asleep. It just was as deep, relaxing, and warm as I remembered it. I slept in my room, which is incredibly nice. Very traditional looking, old style ryokan with the tatami mat floors, old paper lanterns, wooden closets and storage. And it was super cozy to watch the snow out of the window while having a cup of tea. The food was excellent, just as I remembered. They have a restaurant where they serve you breakfast and dinner. The next day it was time to experience a traditional local festival in Tokamachi. But before that we had a delicious lunch at the Shitozi restaurant. They served us a meal with local pork over fried rice. After the delicious meal it was time to watch the human sacrifice. This is the wife of the man who's about to be thrown off of this hillside. Because thousands of years ago they started this tradition because a man from another village came and married one of the women. They were mad about that and they did this as sort of a revenge and it continued year after year to throw the husbands off of the snowy hill. After that they light this giant haystack on fire and smear the ashes on each other's foreheads for good luck. It's really interesting to see for yourself something you might see in a documentary about a village local festival. Another great thing about Nagata is they are famous for sake, which you can try a lot of varieties of. We went to this local brewery that did not only sake, but also beer. My favorite one is this one. That one? The Alt. Alt. Another place you can try a large variety of sake is at the Ichigo Yuzawa Station where you can just go in with tokens and try over 100 varieties. So much sweeter. Mm. It's like alcohol syrup. Mm. <laughs> it's like a cough medicine. It's plum flavored and alcoholic. After getting decently tipsy, you might be brave enough to try some crickets on ice cream. They look like they've been candied. I like the ice cream. Why does this look like a fish? I think this small one. Mm. Oh. <laughs> it's very salty. It's like kind of salty sweet. This one's leg is sticking up. <laughs> a little challenged by it. 
The other one didn't have his leg out. <laughs> <laughs> it's gritty. <laughs> it's very gritty. Crickets isn't filling, but at the Ichiko Yuzuwa station, they actually are famous for these giant onigiri rice balls, which have a variety of fillings you can choose from. It is actually very good and almost as big as my face. I chose a pork one. There are a lot of local coffee shops around the station, which I much prefer to going to Starbucks. This one was quite cute and the coffee was quite good. Inside is a bit of a shop, you can buy some of their artwork that they make as well. This trip to the north of Japan had been really exciting, relaxing, and delicious. There was one more thing that I wanted to try, which involved going to Green Pia Resort. Green Pia is very beautiful and they are famous for releasing sky lanterns every night in the winter. Of course, this is another expectation versus reality, as there was only me and maybe four other guests at this hotel. I wrote my wishes on my paper lantern, and I released it. I'm not going to tell you what I wished for, but I really hope it comes true this year.